The 1950s was a time where America began to hit its peak. This also was a time where popular icons like Marilyn Monroe and Elvis Presley were adored by citizens of the U.S. People became obsessed with pop culture and gave into it. New cars, clothes, important icons all came into the picture during this era. In the midst of all the new highways, swimming music, and new technology, these popular icons, which didn't just include people, helped spawn pop art, which was an art form that tried to combat abstract art. Pop art started in America by the likes of artists such as Robert Rauschenberg, creator of Retroactive One, and Andy Warhol, creator of the Maryland Diptych, which we'll get to in a bit. Pop art movement was a young and fun movement where artists aimed to blur the boundaries between high art and low culture. While abstract artists could look for problems with trauma, pop artists instead looked at their modern media for problems and trauma, like Marilyn Monroe. Andy Warhol was a great example of this as he created the Marilyn Diptych. The Marilyn Diptych is a painting of none other than Marilyn Monroe, which helped reinforce Warhol's idea that people see her face every day and it eventually lost its meaning to the audience. Eventually, he also took uh, several other forms of popular icons such as the Campbell soup cans and did the same style. Robert Rauschenberg was another American pop artist who helped start the movement. In his style, he would use found images where they would all have a connection or relationship. For example, in his painting Retroactive One, he links John F. Kennedy to the Cuban Missile Crisis and how maybe man's potential for evil has been multiplied in the modern world, which is represented by the astronaut landing into a box of apples or forbidden fruit. Roy Lichtenstein was the third part of the trio who helped bring pop art to light. What made him special is that he sources paintings from comic books, specifically DC Comics. Although he was accused of stealing his art from comic strips, they were actually his own, but with changes made to the original source, he would crop out these paintings to make a new dramatic piece. Although the movement began in the US, the start of pop art was in the UK. Richard Hamilton was one of those artists that helped bring light to his, to his original pop art. In this era, Many romanticized the pop culture in the United States, claiming it was the land of the free. So many pop artists use this to help them express this in their art. In Hamilton's piece, just what is it that makes today's home so different, so appealing? It is a catalog of imagery, going from movies, to food, to cars, celebrities, and all sorts of things. It's sort of describing the American lifestyle. Edward Palazzi, along with Hamilton, helped start the independent group. The independent group was a group of artists that would explore radical approaches to modern culture. They helped further pop art, and Paolo Ezzi actually gave a lecture which took an ironic look at the American lifestyle, and he made it I was a rich man's plaything to go with it. It was also the first piece of artwork to include the word pop. This whole movement later made impacts to people protesting the Vietnam War, as well as the assassination of John F. Kennedy. This type of art also helped, peop also helped bring about the start of hippies, stereotypical hippies, and eventually gave us the path to the type of mainstream-centered culture we have today.